Hello, welcome to JP Academy. My name is Ekwe Jesse and I am an electrical engineer with a vast knowledge on power system design, analysis and protection using ETAP software. I'll be taking you on a master class and in this series, I'll be teaching you on how to transition from an absolute beginner to a specialist in power system design, analysis and protection. In this section, I'll be giving an overview of the course, which means I will be giving a brief breakdown of everything I'll be teaching in this course. So, in this masterclass, I'll begin by teaching on the concept of power systems and power system analysis. In this part, I'll be teaching what a power system is and what a power system is not. It is crucial to understand the fundamentals of power system before proceeding into power system analysis because you cannot perform an analysis on what you do not know. So I'll be establishing a firm foundation on power systems and power system analysis to ensure everybody is on the same page. The next part I will be teaching will be a detailed introduction to ETAP software. Now, ETAP is an acronym for Electrical Transient Analyzer Program. I'll take that again. ETAP is an acronym for Electrical Transient Analyzer Program. Now, ETAP is a tool it is an analytical engineering tool which aids an electrical engineer to design, simulate, and analyze the steady state dynamics of a power system. ETAP is used by various sectors such as generation, transmission, distribution, industrial, and transportation. After that, we'll proceed to the next part, which is AC components, DC components, and instrumentation components. Now, instrumentation components such as relays, distance relays, differential relays, and the likes, potential transformers, PTs, current transformers, CTs, and AC components such as transformers, induction motors and the likes so i'll be teaching on what these components are where we should use these components when we should use these components and most importantly how to use these components now after that we'll proceed to the next part which is the concept of single line diagrams. In this part, I'll be teaching on what a single line diagram is all about and what a single line diagram is not. I will also be teaching on the importance of single line diagrams. That is why we need a single line diagram. And lastly for this part, I'll be teaching on how to draw a single line diagram. After we have successfully laid a good foundation on single line diagrams and how to draw them, we we'll proceed into the concept of load flow analysis, also known as power flow analysis. Now, if you're following me properly, you understand that everything I'm teaching is connected in series. <laughs> and this is because in order to perform a power system analysis, you must understand or have a good foundation on power systems. And in order to draw a single line diagram, you must know about AC components, DC components, and instrumentation components. 
after drawing a single line diagram in order to validate the project model you must perform at least a load flow analysis now a load flow analysis is a systematic mathematical approach which is used in the determination of various bus voltages their phase angles active and reactive power flow through different branches and loads under steady state conditions simply put a load flow analysis is a study which is performed in order to ascertain the behavior of a power system so in this part i'll be teaching you on the fundamentals of load flow analysis and i will also teach on the methods of performing a load flow analysis such as newton rapson gauss seidel and fast decoupled i will also teach on why you should perform a load flow analysis and then how to perform a load flow analysis and most importantly how to interpret the results obtained after performing this load flow analysis then to wrap up this part i'll be teaching on automatic switching and interlocking of circuit breakers now after we are done with the concept of load flow analysis we can go into the next part which is ETAP three-dimensional database now in this part we'll be dealing with presentations configurations and revisions so presentations have to do with creating multiple scenarios in which we can perform different analysis on the power system different analysis such as a load flow and short circuit simultaneously while configurations is used to change the operating status or vary the operating status of an element in the power system network such as changing the operating status of a tiebreaker or isolating a transformer in order to see how the power system will operate in this condition lastly revisions has to do with changing the base data of an equipment or component and observing how the power system would operate with this change base data involves things like the impedance of a transformer now once we conclude the part of etap three-dimensional database we'll move on to cable selection and sizing as well as transformer sizing so in this part i'll be teaching you on cables i'll be teaching on why to use cables where to use cables when to use cables and also how to appropriately select a cable to use then i'll be teaching on how to size a cable properly because it is not enough to select the cable it is crucial to properly size the cables and after that in this part the last thing i'll be teaching on is how to appropriately size a transformer then we can proceed to the next section which is on voltage regulation or control power loss minimization and power factor correction so in this section i'll be teaching on methods for voltage regulation or control in an ac system or a dc power system methods such as excitation control the use of tap changing transformers booster transformers series capacitors shunt capacitors the use of static valve compensators and the likes so i'll be teaching on why you should use each of this method where to use each of this method when to use each of this method and most importantly how to use each of these 
methods. Once we are done with that, we will proceed into reliability assessment and contingency analysis in a power system. Basically, a reliability assessment has to do with the expected energy not supplied, EENS. I'll take that again. Expected energy not supplied, EENS. And the expected interruption cost, also known as E cost. While the contingency analysis is similar to a load flow analysis, using configurations now remember configurations are used to perform multiple what if scenarios this contingency analysis is used for large power systems and that is the basic difference between both of them so once we are done with that we we'll proceed to the next section which is on short circuit analysis in this section, I'll be teaching on the concept of short circuit analysis, why you should perform a short circuit analysis, and most importantly, how to perform a short circuit analysis. So I'll be teaching on how to determine the minimum and maximum magnitude of fault current flowing through each bus bar in the power system under different scenarios such as a, the occurrence of a line to ground fault a line to line fault a double line to ground fault and a three-phase or symmetrical fault and lastly in this section i'll be teaching on how to use the information obtained or the results obtained from a short circuit analysis to size appropriately protective devices after the short circuit analysis, we'll be going into a crucial part of power systems, which is power system protection. This is a very important part, so we'll be dealing with it critically. Now, under power system protection, I'll be teaching on the fundamentals of power system protection, which involves the different zones of power system protection as well as the characteristics of a good protection system characteristics such as selectivity reliability simplicity speed sensitivity stability and the likes so after ensuring a firm foundation on power system protection we we'll proceed into overcurrent protection which is also known as 5051 so, as the name implies, overcurrent protection is the protection against an excessive magnitude of current. And in the design of an overcurrent protection scheme, we'll make use of overcurrent relays. Having established that, I'll be teaching on why to use an overcurrent protection where to use overcurrent protection and most importantly how to design an overcurrent protection scheme when we are done with that part we'll go into arc flash analysis an arc flash is a spark of electrical current which leaves its intended path and travels through air from one conductor to another to ground when insulation or isolation between conductors is no longer sufficient to withstand the applied voltage. Now, this arc that is generated can heat up a metal to a point of vaporization, cause severe burns, skin burns by direct heat exposure and by igniting clothing. Therefore, it is important to perform this analysis in order to determine the nature and frequency of occurrence of the arc so that we can prefer suitable methods for protection purposes. So in this part, I'll be teaching on the concept of arc flash. I'll also be teaching on the fundamentals of arc flash analysis. 
why you should perform an arc flash analysis and most importantly how to perform an arc flash analysis and once we're done with that we'll proceed into differential protection and its code is 87. Now this differential protection utilizes differential release and in this section I'll be teaching on the effect of an internal fault as well as an external fault and also how the differential relay is expected to respond to each of these fault scenarios. Now differential protection is used on generators and transformers. So in this section I'll be teaching on the fundamentals of differential protection, why to use differential protection, where and when to use a differential protection, and most importantly how to design a differential protection scheme. So once we are done with the section on differential protection, we will then begin distance protection. Now distance protection utilizes distance release and the code is 21. Distance protection is used on transmission lines and in this section I'll be teaching on the fundamentals of distance protection and how to design a distance protection scheme. I'll be teaching on three steps distance protection and four steps distance protection. Now three step distance protection means segmenting the transmission lines or your protection system into three zones. Four step distance protection means segmenting the protection system into four zones and observing how the differential relay operates when a fault is within any of these zones. And lastly, I'll be teaching on substation design in general. So, at the end of the course, I will be adding a bonus which is for our scholars and I will be teaching you how to write journals worth publishing. Thank you so much for listening. I do hope we will have a great session.